Welcome to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave, and today I'm joined by Ryan Grimm, who is a reporter at a new media venture, Drop Site News, and also co-hosts CounterPoints in the Breaking Points family. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. It's lovely to be with you, with Robbie here on the on stage again. Yeah, we it. used yeah. to do this on All Rising. All the time. We, uh, I, I miss it, Ryan, so Me I'm too. glad to have you I here. I do, it's fun to be back here. Why don't you tell us what uh, we're talking about? All right, so President Joe Biden sat down for an interview with NBC's Lester Holt, intending to reassure voters that he is fit for office as concerns about his cognitive health have increased. Biden ended up criticizing the media for allegedly being too nice to Trump. Let's watch. Why don't you guys ever talk about the 18 to 28 lies he told? Where, where are you on this? Why didn't the press ever talk about that? 28 times it's confirmed he lied in that debate. I had a bad, bad night. I wasn't feeling well at all. And I had been, without him making it, I screwed up. But I, I, I just asked a question because the, the, the idea that you may or may not have seen what some of these other folks have seen, you're not on the same... I'd have to see, I was there. <laughs> I'd have to see it, I was there. And by the way, seriously, you won't answer the question, but why didn't the press talk about all the lies he told? Well, I haven't heard have, anything about that. We have, re we have reported many of the issues that no, came you up during that debate. No, you haven't. We will provide you with them. So there you have it. Biden trying to um, gain back some of the momentum that was lost during the debate. Look, I don't think he did as badly there as he did in the debate, mostly because the, the questioning was not, they, he got a lot of leeway there to kind of take his time answering. But I don't really think... You know, if people who are worried, they're not going to be more worried than they were before, but I don't think they're going to be coming back to the fold. Yeah, he, he did. He did close to as bad. And it, when you're trying to say that the debate was an aberration to do just almost as bad as that uh, doesn't really help. And I would quibble uh, with his accuracy there. He said about his own debate performance, I was there. What is the, <laughs> what's the evidence for that? <laughs> was he? Yeah. Was he there? That's what a lot of people are wondering. He, yeah, he was asked by, who was it? He said, did you go, uh, Stephanopoulos asked, have you gone back and watched? And he gave that weird answer where he said, I, I don't remember, you know, if I've gone back and watched, which I read as actually he had gone back and watched, and, but was in, so embarrassed by his performance that he didn't want to admit it. Uh, but that, here, he, here he goes again saying, I, I don't need to go back and watch it. Uh, but maybe, maybe he does need to go back and watch it one more time. Go watch the Lester Holt thing. Or just be honest with yourself for five seconds. Come on, Admit come on, Jack. Maybe, maybe you're not up for this. Um, you know, and there he, I, I love the lashing out at the media for the coverage not being the way he wants it. And of course, what he's saying is just not true, as Lester Holt points out. There has been no <laughs> shortage. Not enough media coverage of Trump's lies. That's, yeah. that's what America's lacking. I mean, that's really their attitude, right? That's yeah. the Biden campaign attitude that the media is being insufficiently critical of Trump. And the reality is it's just for the, maybe for the first time, they're being as duly critical of Biden as they are of Trump. There's a, a, a equality of the coverage, not for the exact same reasons, but they are showing Biden the scrutiny that they have been hitting Trump with for the entirety of him being on the political scene. Right, it's, it, it's true that like tr a lot of what Trump says just isn't true, but a lot of what Biden says lately can't be fact-checked because you just can't make sense of it. <laughs> like you wouldn't be able to say, is this sentence accurate or not? Right. Like, what is it even saying? When he does make statements that are clear, Biden is still telling a lot of lies. Like he still goes around saying that he's seen photographs of uh, like Hamas, like beheading babies and things like this. And like, and then you go back to his, uh, his staff and they say, uh, yeah, that's actually not true. Like he never saw that photograph. Uh, m maybe there was some call with Netanyahu where he said that, but then Netanyahu himself says, yeah, that. Yeah, he should drop that yeah. one from his but repertoire. He, he, won't. he won't. And so it undercuts this uh, effort to like go after Trump as for being this like relentless liar when he's also pretty uh, not careful with the truth. Yeah, and, and that has been a story for him for forever. I Ever, mean, his first forever. his first entrance into the really national political spotlight was plagiarizing a speech. Um, he's made claims about uh, his other son, the the death of Bo Biden, that are not accurate. He's a couple times, you know, attributing it to uh, died saying saying that he actually died in Iraq. He died in a hospital in Virginia. Although on on that one, I'll defend him because 
he usually catches himself and and he'll usually not every time and he'll say as a result of the Iraq war because the burn pits yeah. he, he believes and I think it's fair for him to believe that sure uh, but yeah in eighty eight not only did he plagiarized this speech from a Scottish politician that included lines about his family working the land for like 2,000 years. It's like, you haven't been in Delaware for 2,000 years. He also had to apologize that campaign for saying that he was active in the civil rights movement. So we have him on camera apologizing for having said that. This year, he made that claim again. He made that claim again during the 2020 campaign that he was active in the civil rights movement a claim that he dropped out of a presidential race for making and apologized for, back to making. And, and it, he's, you know, he's talked about uh, getting arrested, trying to visit Nelson Mandela in prison. Like, it's, it, the, the, list, the list goes on and on. Uh, but also, okay, let's say, let's say Biden's telling the truth here, that actually the media is not sufficiently focusing on Trump. The reason for that would be because the media can't stop talking about the fact that Biden can't string sentences together, and that there's a massive campaign to get him to step off the top of the ballot. The only thing he can do about that is prove it's all wrong by having regular press conferences and interviews and acing them, but he can't do that, or dropping out. So even his own complaint that the press is focusing on him rather than Trump comes actually back to him. Get off and let Kamala Harris or any other standard issue Democrat be the top top of the ticket, and they'll be prosecuting Trump, and then we'll talk about Trump again. I think it's pretty clear, and you've actually said this before as well on, when I had you on Rising the other week, I have no expectation that Biden is going anywhere. Mm -hmm. They will not make him, that's the, the mistake people make, and thinking, well, they will eventually get sick of this and show him the door, and like, there's not there's not really a they. He's the they, he's in charge. He His conviction that he should be president again is very strong. Donald Trump's conviction that he should be president again is very strong. It is uh, remarkable, I think, not in an admirable way necessarily that these people cling to and seek power to such a degree, um, to such an all-consuming degree that even when people in their own parties and organizations turn on them, as they have on Trump and after Access Hollywood and again on January 6th, said, don't care, still running for president, um, you have to fall in line, and eventually they did. And we're kind of seeing something like that on the Democratic side. They did step up some pressure, although this week that's a lot quieter than it was last week. I don't know if that's just the news cycle moving on to the next thing, which the next thing being a significant thing, <laughs> the, the potential assassination, assassination attempt. attempt. It's wild, so I, I understand the media focusing on something else. But uh, the, the latest reporting is that they want to move up the, the, the actual voting date. That says to me that for all the talk about, well, it's his decision to make, but we hope he makes the right decision. He's made the decision. It's made. He's running. He's not going anywhere. He is, he's currently made it, that's for sure. There, there are definitely powerful factions trying to get him to unmake it, but he's barreling ahead. And there's this, it, it's wild to see Democrats, again, complaining that Trump is a big liar, liar, pants on fire, and why won't the media cover it? While at the same time, Biden is saying, we have to move up <laughs> the, the, this nomination process. Democracy is at stake. Right? Democracy is at stake, and if we don't do it, Ohio law means that Democrats won't be able to be on the ballot. That is a lie. It's not true. That law has been changed. Like, you are lying, and you, you know you're lying. And so it's just one more to add to the pile. Uh, they, in fact, moving up might make it harder, would make it harder, to change the nominee if they decided to down the road, which is the entire purpose right, which is exactly what of he's what doing. they're doing. But so it's not legally difficult at all now to put any two Democrats you want on the ticket, uh, but it could be b based on what Biden's trying to do. Got a lot more free media to get to today. Stick around.